the show already what is up everybody welcome into this flipping bats now post game show team usa wins and advances i am ben verlander joined as always by alex curry we needed to win we won we advanced we will be playing team venezuela a lot to talk about today alex in this episode obviously all about this team usa game what happened why it was so close, how we advanced, what could have happened, and also some really big news. The best closer in the game of baseball, Edwin Diaz, goes down after the game ended in the Puerto Rico-Dominican game, and the, the injury did not look great. We'll talk all about that. We have a lot to discuss, Alex, but off the top, just finished up. We're recording seconds after the game I, ended. Team USA wins and advances. I think we hit almost every emotion today, just through all of the games. I mean, there was extreme excitement. There were tears. This USA game, there's a little bit of stress only holding on to a 3-2 win, even going to the bottom of the ninth there. There were scenarios we started to talk about, but the good news is Captain America, Mike Trout, showed up today for Team USA, driving in all three runs and sending USA to the quarterfinals where they're going to take on Venezuela. You know, when, when team USA needed somebody or something, it's like who, of course it was yeah. Mike Trout that showed up. This lineup is full of all stars and there's hall of famers in it, but Mike Trout will ultimately go down as one of the greatest of all time. And having them as the captain of this team, when team USA needed him, needed the team to figure it out. It started last game against Canada. Mike Trout figured it out. He got it all going. He did it again today. A couple of hits, a triple to start the game. He's locked in. I know after he talked to, uh, after the Canada game on the field, he was talking to Ken Rosenthal and he talked about his timing and he yeah. said, yeah, you know, cause he, he said it's, it's March and yep. Mike Trout said, you know, yeah, my timing's not exactly where I want it to be, but it doesn't really matter. These game these games matter mm -hmm. and we have to win this. We have to win this for our country and that's how important it is to him and of anybody to get this turned around I think we all believe that at the end of the day it would be Mike Trout and Mookie stepped up as well the, yeah. the guys at the top of the lineup the MVP the MVPs the lineup, they're here yeah I mean Mike Trout was my player of the game to watch he needed to set the tone we saw what he did against Canada when when he gets it going when he swings the bat it just changes the whole dynamic of the team energy wise players want to you know hitting gets contagious you want to follow suit you want to keep it going but it was close it was a lot closer than both of us predicted this game was going to be but end of the day bottom line team USA is moving on in that second seed below Mexico yeah which you know it I, I said this before obviously the loss to Mexico a little bit embarrassing honestly it might be what team USA needed because the following game coming out, you just felt a different energy. Having yeah. Tim Anderson at second base kind of said, like, we're desperate and we need to do what we need to do to win. But the seeding coming out of Pool C, it's kind of irrelevant playing Pool D. Both of those teams are great. You knew you were going to get two of yeah. those three star studded teams. The goal was to advance advance we did yeah and one thing i one thing i, I think is really cool about all of this and you know it, the the goal today was to win and it was a 3-2 ball game it was close columbia has really good pitching we've seen it yeah. i'm not super concerned about that the offense is better it's awake it's alive it is so refreshing and cool because this whole tournament i've been talking about how big this tournament is and how special it is and it just felt like the energy for team usa wasn't there and to see mike trout after the previous game to say that he is having the best time that he has ever had in his life on a baseball field right now. I mean, that speaks volumes. And he was sitting right next to Adam Wainwright in the dugout and Adam Wainwright said to him, this is the best time of my life. See, I mean, but think about it. Mike Trout really hasn't had 
postseason playoff experience. Yeah. He's had three games, and he lost all three of those games back in 2014. So this is the first time that he is truly experiencing a playoff atmosphere where every game matters. You win, you're in, you move on. And honestly, that's why I chose Team USA to win this entire tournament because Mike Trout has never been in this situation. I knew he would rise to the occasion. I knew he would feed off the energy that every single game and atmosphere is giving him. And he is going to will this team to the championship. The the, the full Mike Trout quote, I feel, is very important to this because yeah. Mike Trout's not just saying this. And he was kind of the one that kicked that got the ball rolling for people – agreeing to sign up and play for Team USA. I mean, look, Mookie's having the time of his life out there. This changed things, Mike Trout joining. And this was his quote. The group of guys, the atmosphere, the coaching staff, it's been unbelievably fun. It's the best time I've had in my life on a baseball field. It's special to put USA across your chest and go out there to play for your country. Nothing compares. Special. It doesn't. Nothing and, compares And I to think that. that's the cool thing about the game of baseball is it's also – you know, it's equally about playing for, for your team, but it's also yeah. about representing your country at times, and these guys are doing that. Ultimately, Team USA wins. They did enough. Mike Trout did enough. He Oh, yeah. He was great at the plate tonight. Pitching did enough. The back end of the bullpen. This is why I said at the beginning of the tournament, yep. Alex, pitching is a worry, sure, but do not worry because if we stay in games, the back end of the bullpen is dominant. Devin Williams and his changeup, slash airbender they call it yep is so good might be one of the greatest change-ups of all time ryan presley at the back end pitching did enough offense did enough and ultimately team usa survives and advances and they're headed to miami where we're headed tomorrow we're heading there as well you know what i thought was was interesting about this what? game we were just talking about it as the game was wrapping up because team usa to advance only had to not lose by four or more runs. If they if they lost by three or less, they would have advanced. Obviously, they enter that ninth inning up one run, yeah. which a few interesting questions came about of, okay, well, if they tie the game here, like, we have a real concern. And then you start thinking of the ulterior ways you would handle this. I really think, Alex, if if they had tied the game, right, Yeah. to go up, to, if they had tied the game and then got a couple of guys on base – the only thing you can't have to not advance is a walk-off grand slam. I think what we would have seen if two guys got on base is intentionally walk in the winning run to lose and advance to the next round. How crazy <laughs> would that have been? I, it's, it's nuts to think because that's not something you would ever do during the regular <laughs> no. season because a loss isn't going to benefit you in any other way than right. this tournament where it's the run differential run quotients that like come into play yeah yeah that's crazy crazy all right well pool play wrapped up today this was the final game but earlier today mexico defeated canada taking that number one seed what stood out to you most in that game randy rosarena and joey manessis those guys have been so good for their teams randy rosarena and joey manessis are hitting 500 on the tournament each a Rosarena 500 five doubles a homer nine RBIs so for me coming into today it started out one of the best and brightest days that we have ever had in the WBC and for for other reasons that the the mood around today changed a little which we'll talk about in yeah. a second but every single game today everyone was win in advance yeah losing you're done Canada Mexico and then um, what was the other one? Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and the yeah. USA, Colombia. And then the Mexico-Canada game kind of got things going. And Mexico, Mexico is the real deal. That's kind of my takeaway here is there's legit studs in this lineup yeah. that can rake in a Rosarena and Rowdy Telez golfing balls out of the yard and Joey Manessis. But this pitching staff might be one of – it is probably the most underrated pitching staff in the game in this tournament and they're going to have Julio Urias on the mound for their quarterfinal Oof. game with a lineup that's pretty hot right now. My takeaway was Mexico yeah. is no joke. Yeah, no, Mexico looked great. But let's transition to that other win and your in game today that you mentioned. We had Puerto Rico against the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico came out on fire. They went from probably the highest of highs celebrating winning that game 
to all of a sudden the lowest of low when Edwin Diaz injured his knee during the postgame celebration? It's hard to even talk about. I mean, we were in shock watching it. Um, It happened as we were walking from, we had just finished up on set and we're walking to another room to start watching the game. And we hear, you know, we have people on the staff running saying, Oh my God, Edwin is Edwin is hurt. He's getting carried off the field. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? He's got carried off the field. I I just watched the last out out the game. The game's over. And they're saying when the team was jumping up and down celebrating, Edwin Diaz went down to the ground, had to get carried off the field. You, we see it now if you're watching. He was put in a wheelchair, wheeled off the field. Uh, it's, being, it's being evaluated as a right knee injury. So what was thought at a time to possibly be an Achilles, you know, the, the social media doctors were yes. out in full force. Yes. Um, but it is officially... Uh, they're they're in, they're looking at his right knee. Nothing has been as we're recording immediately following the game yeah. on Wednesday night. Nothing as of now has been announced. The Mets tweeted this: Edwin Diaz injured his right knee after tonight's WBC game. He will undergo imaging tomorrow, and we will update when appropriate. Look, it's it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Um, he is aside from just a human being getting hurt in this way. It's heartbreaking in other ways. This is the best closer in the game of baseball right now. This is heartbreaking for Edwin Diaz. It's heartbreaking for the New York Mets, for the fans of the Mets. And to be quite honest with you, it's heartbreaking for the game of baseball because there's not a lot that was better going on than Edwin Diaz, the doors opening up in the bullpen, Timmy Trumpets playing, the trumpets blaring, him coming in and blowing people's doors off for three straights out three straight outs. It was incredible. This is a big loss. It's heartbreaking. I, I'm struggling to talk about it. I struggled when it happened to even come to terms with it for a little while. And uh, this has repercussions on, you know, it, it, this This is tough for the Mets and for the game of baseball, for sure. Yeah, and I think what also kind of was heartbreaking was seeing his brother is also playing uh, on Team Puerto Rico. Alexis Diaz was on the field crying with him. I That's where you really, truly understood the magnitude, I think, of the injury and the impact that this has, as you mentioned, not only on the game of baseball and the Mets, but also the World Baseball Classic. Because this is a lot of teams' big fear, having their main guys, best guys in each position, come and play a big tournament like this during the middle of spring training. So what does this mean for the tournament moving forward? I think that's probably the question that after you talk about Edwin Diaz as a human being. I think that's probably the most important, important thing here is Edwin Diaz is hurt and this really sucks. But after down the line comes, okay, well he got hurt in this world baseball classic tournament. Right. And, and what does this mean for the tournament? And there's plenty of people out there now saying this tournament means nothing. This is ridiculous. This should have never happened. And for so many reasons, I need to address this. Because I couldn't be further from the truth. Let's start with people saying this tournament means nothing. To who? You? The people saying that? Because you look at these players on every single team, and they're all playing super hard. They're all saying they're having the best time of their life. The energy, the passion, the ability for them to be able to represent their home country. Or who else? The fans in the stands? The ones crying tears of joy, crying in the wake of defeat, the energy, the passion, the energy from the crowd, and, and no matter what location you're at. So when we're, when we're saying this tournament doesn't matter, I would argue that that's completely false. That's ridiculous. This tournament is continuing to grow the game of baseball. It's furthering players' love of the sport. It's furthering fans' love of the sport. And it's continuing to grow the sport globally. I think that's the first and foremost important thing to say is you can say this tournament means nothing to you, but turn on the TV and you'll see immediately how important this tournament is to all the players involved, all the fans in the stands, and and to so many people involved in all of this. I agree wholeheartedly with everything you said here. And another thing people have to realize, this was a freak accident. He was celebrating jumping up and down this could have happened at any point during spring training. If you're jumping up and down in the clubhouse with it, it, 
If you're walking. I don't mean to cut you off. This yeah. is important to what you just said. Last year, 2021, the New York Mets spring training, they had a day where they were tasked by the coaches. The outfielder was going to catch a ball, and they were going to celebrate winning the World Series to practice what they would do. The team went nuts. They were throwing their gloves. They were jumping up and down. They were doing exactly what Team Puerto Rico was doing tonight after yep. the victory because they wanted to practice that feeling of celebrating. Yep. So to your point, of course it's a freak accident. It could happen yeah. anywhere. They literally practiced it last year in spring training. Yeah. It's one of those you never want to see it happen. You never want to see it happen to one of the best in their position in the game and during a tournament where everything is celebrated on such a high world stage level. But this is what happens in sports. Every yeah. single sport, you're going to see people get injured early in unfortunate circumstances, and that's what happened here. I mean, our hearts go out to Edwin Diaz, and we hope it's nothing that's going to keep him out for the whole season. And hopefully, eventually, maybe he'll be able to make it back by the end of the season. But at this point, it's it's unfortunate, but it happened, and we still have to continue to celebrate this game and this tournament. We will, um, obviously, as I said, we don't know right now. Yeah. Apparently, more will be out tomorrow. Alex and I and the Flippin' Bats crew will be on our way to Miami tomorrow. So immediately when we get there, the first show that we are up and running, we will have an yeah. update. I'm sure you will have all heard it, but we will have our thoughts on the whole situation. And just to, to finish off your point here about how, of a, how much of a freak accident this is, you know, I, I was thinking about this and Gavin Lux tore his ACL, yeah. just trotting to third base. This spring training, Michael Soroka tore his Achilles walking into the locker room a couple of years ago. Royce Lewis, the Twins' top prospect, tore his ACL slipping on ice in the offseason. These things happen. So we can point to exactly what he was doing. The truth is he wasn't even playing a baseball game when this happened. Yep. He was celebrating. And did it happen at the WBC? Sure. But these things happen. I remember vividly. Paul George years ago in an exhibition tune-up for Team USA in the Olympics. In the exhibition tune-up, he tore his ACL out for a while. I mean, it's a freak accident. It yep. happens. And unfortunately for Edwin Diaz, um, it happened tonight as he was celebrating the monumental Puerto Rico victory yeah. that we would be remiss if we didn't talk about. Because today um, – the games were all great, but this one kind of stood out above the rest because of the talent on both sides and Puerto Rico and the Dominican and the crowds. It was insane, Alex. It was insane. We were told, because this was the the later game, the evening game in Miami. There was a game before that. Mm -hmm. Fans were lined up starting at 9 a.m. for this game. Both Dominican fans and Puerto Rico fans, they were waiting the entire day, waiting for the first game to finish just to get in and be a part of of this moment and the moment was so big it was so electric you could feel the energy of these fans through the tv and throughout the entire game every play even if it was a pop a pop out fly ball yeah fans were going insane you if you weren't watching you were listening to it you're like oh home run ball oh no that was just an easy <laughs> standard yeah just your out. routine baseball play yeah <laughs> but the the crowd was going insane I, a lot of people had the Dominican Republic favored to win the entire tournament yep. and they got knocked out in pool play. Yeah. I think every, every game that the Dominican played in, in this tournament, they were the pretty heavy favorites to win from the beginning, the game against Venezuela when they lost big time, the games where they did win this game, they were the pretty heavy favorites. And one thing I just, I feel like, you know, needs to be talked about more and more is, is it is the crowd and just this game as a whole, Baseball in, in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico is baseball unlike most people here in the United States know it. And it is special. And to see those crowds, to see the atmosphere and the game that we got. And this is what's – there's more uh, unfortunate things about the situation. But one of the unfortunate things about the Edwin Diaz situation is rightfully so, that became the conversation after the game. Yeah. Worried about a human being. The game that did take place was probably one of the – it was, I would say, definitely the most electric game in World Baseball Classic history and probably one of the better games. It ended up 5-2 Puerto Rico. They get out to an early lead. Uh, a lot happened all around. Big plays, big hits. But to me, 
the most exciting <laughs> thing oh my that goodness. happened in this game, Alex. Francisco Lindor and his Little League home run. Little League inside the park home run. It was so cool. It was incredible. And a rare error by Julio, Julio Rodriguez yeah. that just had a weird bounce that went right by him. And Lindor did not stop running. And then there was another error when the ball was trying to come in. That It was electric. That moment, I think, really shifted the game yep. to Puerto Rico. Yep, absolutely. And just to clarify, when I say Little League inside the parker, it just means it, it doesn't technically go down as an inside the park home yeah. run. There was an error involved, so it's not a Lindor home run. But he was the batter. Yep. He ended up scoring. The yep. run counts. Little League inside the park home run. But the players – when they came out to the plate, they like jumped on him at home. Yeah. The crowd, the place was shaking. Yes. Like this is by far, it might not be saying a lot, but by far the Marlins, the loudest the Marlins stadium has ever been <laughs> since it's been yeah. in existence. For yeah. Sure. And it's only going to get louder as we go on because we got the quarterfinals coming up. There was already a quarterfinal game that happened yep. early this morning. Australia and Cuba. Cuba came out on top and has already advanced to the semifinals. Alex, you know what a, a 3 o'clock, a 3 a.m. Pacific time start means in the World Baseball Classic? Bands up. I'm awake. <laughs> the old 250 alarm. I was up and rolling to check out this game. And it really, it, it didn't disappoint. I know uh, these aren't the, these haven't been the two most exciting teams. Team Cuba started off 0-2. I declared them out, gone. Yeah. They're not going to make it. But via the craziness in Pule and the tiebreakers, they made it. And then Team Australia was never really given a fair, like never really given a chance by anybody in this entire tournament from the word go. They were the Cinderella of this tournament. Yeah. They were good. They hit better than anybody else in that pool. And to be honest with you, Alex, it was a good baseball game. Cuba ends up winning 4-3. It was close. It was tight. It was well played. Not a lot of errors. Good pitching. Timely hitting. Good baseball game all around. The first team to punch their ticket to Miami as part of the Final Four, in the yeah. semifinals, is Cuba. Which is crazy. What are their chances to win the WBC? Not great. Okay. Not great. I, yeah, not great. And who would they face? Um, so they're, it, okay. So the way this bracket is, is shaped up now, Team USA getting a two seed facing Venezuela, the one seed. The fact that Team USA is now there, if Team USA wins against yeah. Venezuela, they would play Cuba. Whereas now the one seed plays on the other side, that one seed lines up to play Japan. Oof. Meaning, <gasps> yeah. yeah. Meaning this is setting up for a potential Team USA versus Samurai Japan <laughs> championship game. Which is like the one thing I've always wanted to see is, oh man, this is going to be great. Yeah. We, we won't get the Mike Trout facing Shohei Otani because Shohei Otani is pitching tonight yes, he in is. the quarterfinals with you Darvish, which we'll get to in a moment, but that would just be, Oh yeah. That's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I, that would, I mean, that's the dream scenario. I mean, you really can't go wrong with the matchups. Like, you know, it was lining up for a potential team USA Dominican final, like the, the, the yeah. teams that are there, I would say other than look, just to be honest, other than team Cuba, not because it's, Team Cuba doesn't have their guys going. There's only two major leaguers on the team, yeah. Yohan Mankata and Luis Robert Jr., but the majority of their guys aren't in it. They're still super talented, but of the remaining teams, that's why when you say, do they have a chance to win it? The answer is, of course, they have a chance to win yeah. it. But I would say of the four teams that are going to make it there, they're probably the weakest of the four, but the this tournament is setting up for a, a perfect finals it's really it's really great I love it well let's go back to the next quarterfinal game that's happening in a couple hours here we I'll have up. <laughs> yes you will we have <laughs> Japan facing off against Italy and this is going to be a historic game for Japan and their fans as I mentioned a moment ago they're having Shohei Otani and Yu Darvish split time pitching in this game it, it's a it's a dream come true you know it it, it is a dream come true for for the people of Japan, these are their their guys. Yeah. But like 
their heroes and their idols. When I was in Japan uh, a few months ago, you you go to – I had never experienced Japanese baseball in those stadiums. You go – I got to experience probably four or five games, and everybody in the crowd is wearing, like, Shohei Otani stuff. No matter – you know, Shohei played for the Nippon Ham Fighters yeah. in Hokkaido. And no matter what stadium you go to, they're all, they're a fan of the team they're watching. But in the end, they're fans of Shohei Otani. Yeah. And they're fans of you, Darvish. And now, tonight, in the Tokyo Dome, the final game for Team Japan in the Tokyo Dome in Japan, they're going to get not only Shohei Otani starting on the mound, but they're piggybacking two starters, Shohei Otani and Yu Darvish, potentially going four innings and five innings or five innings and four innings or four innings and four innings to a closer. It's if you could ask a, a if you could ask a, a Team Japan fan what would be the ideal scenario, if you could put together your dream pitching, they'd probably say Shohei Otani passing the ball to Yu Darvish, closing out the game from there. And that is what's gonna happen tonight. So I can't wait. And I think everybody, if you if you can pick a game to, to wake up at three or four or five or six, wherever you're living in the U.S. to wake up for, it's going to be this one. I, I get chills every time you you keep saying Shohei Otani passing the ball to you, Darvish, because it is it, it's it's bigger than the game. And this moment for all these Japanese fans who idolize yeah. these two players. Yeah, they're just their heroes now. Back to Team Japan as a whole here, because from what we've seen, they've kind of turned out and played to the level that we expected them to pay, to play. They've got a ton of strengths, not a lot of weaknesses here, but they haven't really been tested yet. Have they? Have they? Look. Tell the me. Pool B was admittedly not the strongest. No. But I think you look at the way they dominated the games they should dominate. Mm -hmm. um, and then against Team Australia, who I think ended up, I think ended up being undervalued and not given enough credit by everyone. Everyone other than the people in that locker room. I think they ended up with the best hitting in that pool, Team Australia. They, batting average wise, they had a really good offense. Their pitching was not great, but... Have they been battle tested like Team USA? Like, not that Team USA has been super battle tested, but like playing against a Team USA or a Team Dominican or Venezuela or Puerto Rico? No. No. So I, I do agree with you there. But from what I have seen, I this the pitching for Team Japan is something that I think I think is is definitely more than enough to win them this tournament. You know, you talk about Shohei and you Darvish. This is going to be their last start of the tournament. Mm -hmm. But then in a potential semifinal game, you pass the ball to Roki Sasaki. In a, in, a potential, um, in a potential finals matchup, you pass the ball to Yamamoto. It's unbelievable. The, the bullpen, the closer, everything they do pitching-wise is top-notch. It's by far the best pitching that I've seen in this tournament from top okay. to bottom. The offense has done what it needs to do in games, and it's put people away in some games. The starting pitching, the bullpen, the defense, it's all been there. This, My evaluation of Team Japan is that they are, of everybody in this tournament, the most complete package right now. Yeah, I would agree with that. But let's take a moment for Team Italy, okay? Because mm -hmm. they got here. By surprise, a lot of people, but they also had one of the more pure moments, I think, in the tournament so far when they found out that they were advancing because yeah. their entire pool finished 2-2, and they found out by looking up at the Jumbotron and it said, congratulations, <laughs> to Team Italy, and they all freaked out. Yeah. So what, what do you expect to see from Team Italy tonight against such a dominant and complete Team Japan? Well, I think when I look back on that Pool A, I think the one thing that Team Italy did that we will – forever have and not take for granted is that they taught the world what run quotient is yeah yeah they did. and we didn't know really and we learned because of the tiebreaker and they advanced yeah. and they didn't even know and they advanced because of the tiebreaker what we can expect from this team is offense this team this team can hit um they, they do struggle a little bit on the pitching side matt harvey's been pretty dang good in this tournament 
but he's not going to be able to pitch in this game. So offensively, they have been really good so far, I'd say. Nicky Lopez around hitting 500, seven RBIs in the tournament. Uh, there's been a, a lot of guys in this lineup that I have been super impressed by that I might not have known coming into this. Brett Sullivan, their catcher, batting 400. Um, Frelick, their left fielder, batting 389. So offensively, and those numbers are coming from a pool A where there was some good pitching involved there. So what you can expect from Team Italy is a team that can hit. Luckily, Team Japan is throwing out Shohei Otani and you Darvish, so yeah. I feel like they're going to be in good shape there. But most importantly, what you can expect is great mustaches <laughs> from top to bottom on this entire lineup because Team Team Italy all shaved mustaches because Matt Harvey Incredible. did. It's and incredible. in the words of my good friend, Nicky Lopez, who's on the team, well, when the Dark Knight shaves his facial hair into a mustache, everybody shaves their facial hair into a mustache. And yes. that is what you can expect yes. from Team Italy. <laughs> uh, I love it. Now, we had a full slate of games today starting at 3 a.m. So I want to go through the top five moments from Wednesday, starting with number five, Cuba and Australia's quarterfinal thriller. Yeah, the Cuba and Australia game. It was the first quarterfinal of the World Baseball Classic this year, and it really didn't disappoint. Woke up in the middle of the night on the West Coast and needed some good action to happen, and boy, did I get it. There was a lot of good pitching to start the game. Team Cuba pitched really well. Team Australia had some really timely hitting that brought them back into the game when you thought they were down and out, and down to the very last out of the game, this was an intense matchup, a huge homer to right field from Team Australia, really good defense, really good defense from Team Canada. I mean, to me today, this was one of, this was one of the better games when I don't think many people, I think people expected Cuba to kind of come in and route them. And mm -hmm. Team Australia, from the beginning of this tournament, has really impressed. They impressed in this game. But ultimately, Team Cuba is the first team in the World Baseball Classic to punch their ticket to the Final Four. All right, moving on to number four, the atmosphere at Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic game. Alex, I, I, I follow a lot of people that work in the baseball media world, and I saw multiple messages of uh, multiple like tweets and social media posts of people there in attendance saying, it's the middle of March, and this is the best ba baseball atmosphere I've ever seen. And I feel like you could you could feel that through the TV. There's not often times you can like really feel it, but I mean, look at this. I'm jumping watching, up and down in my seat right now, just it, like watching him go ham. It was a party from 9 a.m. on. Yeah. They, they got there at nine in the morning when their game look wasn't until late in the afternoon. Mm. They packed the place. Their game was at seven o'clock Eastern, and the crowds were unlike anything I've ever seen in that stadium, which isn't saying the most in the world, but that Francisco Lindor homer, the the Juan, the, the you know, there were so many. Yeah. Juan Soto's 450-foot home Monster. run to dead center. The crowds were something that it makes me very excited to be going to Miami I can't for the wait. finish of this tournament because it's going to be rowdy and an incredible atmosphere again. Yes, it is. All right, number three, a Rose Arena signing autographs for fans in the outfield. I'm so intrigued by Randy or Rose Arena. Like, he shows up in the biggest games as if he's Babe Ruth. Yeah. He, he'll wear cowboy boots in, in the warm-ups, and he'll just absolutely rake throughout the entire time it's happening. Playoffs, World Baseball Classic, and he's continued to do that in this tournament. He's continued to just – takeover for team Mexico and now in, in a game that meant everything to team Mexico win in advance lose and you're probably out they make a pitching change and Randy Rosarena goes back to the wall the left field wall and starts signing for fans just in the middle of the game signing baseballs signing gloves signing a massive I'm like, like can we talk about how big that glove is I don't know if I've ever seen a glove that big yeah, it's the That's size of his torso. torso. <laughs> like his whole body could fit inside of that glove. Signing that. <laughs> he put it on his hand the, too. It's epic. Randy Rosarena has become a legend from the, the 2020 playoffs yeah. to, to seeing him in this. He arises to the biggest occasions and seeing him 
sign autographs for fans during the game was a special moment. All right, moving on to number two. Canelli's daughter starting the Go Daddy chant in the stands. Tim Canelli is a legend in the Australia baseball world, as they said a million times in the broadcast for those games. He's part of like the first family of Australian baseball, and he's the leadoff hitter for Team Australia. But the best part of all of it is his daughter in the stands today was screaming and starting a chant of the entire Australian fan section, let's go, daddy. And it was so loud and so just pure sweet and loving we've gotten so many special moments from this tournament from the the japan fans yeah. passing around shohei's home run ball to this little girl in the stands just so wholesomely rooting for yeah. her dad down on the field and that was really cool all right and our number one moment of the day oh. is lindor's little league inside the park home run that just sent the stadium on fire it's everything about it it's that it's Francisco Lindor. It's the good swing. It's the hard hit to center. There was a misplay in center field by Julio Rodriguez, which is a shocker in itself. Yeah. Then Lindor just put on the burners, made it all the way around, ends up scoring. The whole team was out of the dugout, jumping up and down, celebrating. The stadium was legitimately shaking. It was, it was really cool to see. And I, to explain, I call it a little league homer because it doesn't count as a home run for Francisco Lindor because of the error. But what it does count as is a run. Yeah. And what it was was a lot of fun. To me, that was <laughs> the best moment of the day. The energy, the passion. It was Francisco Lindor involved. It was Julio Rodriguez involved. It was the crowds. It was the atmosphere. Ah, perfection. It was beautiful. And guess what? What? We're heading to Miami tomorrow. We're heading to Miami. Let's go. <laughs> For the rest of the tournament, Alex and I will be on hand there live bringing you all the action from sometimes the rooftop of a hotel to the other times and the majority of times we'll be live on the field in the stadium for the big matchups, for the semis, for the finals. We will be there. We will be talking to players. We will be having a blast. Um, Alex, this, this tournament has been very special to me as a fan of the game of baseball and yeah. wanting to grow the game of baseball, what it has done so far, me trying to cover it as best as I possibly can for everybody at the wee hours of the morning or the late hours of the night. And to be able to wrap up this tournament by experiencing what, what is sure to be the best conclusion to the world baseball classic, just because of the sheer magnitude of this yeah. one, to be able to, to experience it there and to bring that experience to you all, to everybody listening Oh, it's going to be an absolute blast. I mean, it's been magical. Every single game has felt like a game seven playoff game. I, we've gotten the moments. We've gotten the hits. We've gotten the celebrations. It has just been such a cool experience to see these major league players who may not have been involved before just get excited and be around what it means to be around representing your country and playing the game of baseball. And hey, one one more night of no sleep for you. No sleep okay, to Miami. Oh, that's it. Um, <laughs> and that does it for this episode. I'm cutting Alex off. I'm cutting this all what? off. She is Come on. You are cut off. No, Thank never. you all Let for listening. I, I truly appreciate it. This tournament has meant so much, and you all listening has meant so much as well. This is our final show of the World Baseball Classic on our set because we're going to experience the rest of it in Miami. Make sure you guys are ready for all of it. Subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. Hit that plus button in the top right. And make sure you're followed on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And you can watch everything we do on YouTube as well, at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. The World Baseball Classic rolls on. Alex and I, we are off to Miami. Thank you all for listening. And until next time, this has been the another episode of Flippin' Bats Now.